So, ladies and gentlemen, Jupiter is now in the sign of Taurus. And what are the lessons that it is trying to teach us? I am seeing so many people are going through these lessons, but many of us are not able to understand what it is or depending on our ascendant, how should we approach this? So, as per your ascendant, your lagna, your rising sign, three lessons for every ascendant that Jupiter in Taurus is trying to teach us. All right, don't miss this and share it with somebody who wants to know how this transit is impacting because most of us make these videos before the transit but once the transit occurs we kind of forget <laughs> right so therefore here are three lessons and if you're new don't forget to subscribe to the channel and if you have not watched saturn retrograde and jupiter transit in rohini uh, videos then please go and watch it and also the rahu transit in the new nakshatra that video was also uploaded yesterday so please don't forget to watch and for personalized consultations you will find my website down in the description section god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will surely find him now let's get back to ascendance so first we have aries so for aries what are top three lessons very important the number one lesson is you should stick to financial stability now that does not mean you should not take risks but uh, you need to aim for stability so Aries ascendance you might be doing a lot of trading in the stock market I know some of my friends in uh, who have Aries ascendant and they are doing stock trading well nothing wrong with it but you also need to understand that before you do all this either through stock or crypto you need to build an emergency fund, take term insurance policy, you know, have life insurance and all this and have some money by for with using which you can at least sustain yourself sufficiently for the next six months at least. And after that, you can do whatever you wish, provided you do it with good due diligence. So financial stability is very important. So this transit will emphasize the importance of building and maintaining financial security. Very, 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 very important. Now you might find new opportunities to increase your income, but don't forget stability. Number two, this transit will test your self-worth. Why? Because the second house is the house of self-worth. So if you have self-worth issues, so if, if you feel you have compromised with boundaries, and you have let other people exploit you or other people abuse you, then maybe it's time to relook into your boundaries and try to check why do you have low self-esteem? Why do you have that in the first place? So the more you see that, the more you understand that, the more you will know that you can overcome them. All right. So therefore, set proper boundaries with your family members or friends or colleagues or relatives or acquaintances who try to walk over you and number three you need to learn resource management so this is not specifically with money this is with anything in life so Aries ascendance you need to understand that you have to allocate proper time to every activity so it could happen that you are going on one extreme or the other so for example you might be going all in for you know money or you are going all in for your relationship so now, at times we may have this tendency and we might need to go all out in some area of our life. Nothing wrong with it. Uh, but eventually you have to understand that balance is the key to life. Okay, so therefore, uh, please maintain good balance and Jupiter transit in Taurus might, might have already given you opportunities for good balance. Okay, so seek for financial stability, check your low self-worth, you know, try to work on your self-esteem and do resource management properly avoid the extremes all right all the best aries now we go to taurus this transit is in your first house jupiter in first house nullifies 1000 doshas as the classic say so this means you are now getting cha a chance or many chances to clean up the mess that you might have done <laughs> so therefore this is a time where you should prioritize your uh, self growth so try to learn new things, you know, try to uh, see how you can grow yourself internally, externally, you know, your network circles everywhere. Okay, Try to become more confident, try to become more assertive, try to set boundaries and have a broader outlook towards life. That will really help you. And of course, last but not the least, number two, very important health. 
and your fitness. So it might be uh, the need of the hour that you focus on your health and especially as you know, Jupiter represents, you know, the liver in your body, right? Jupiter represents the fat in your body. So you might feel that, you know, you have to kind of check your food habits. That's very important, okay? Otherwise, otherwise with Jupiter in the first house, you might have a tendency to overeat, okay? And third is, it could bring in overall new opportunities in your life in terms of, you know, relationships, you know, career, marriage, like, you know, children, a new home, new car. So in general, you should be open to trying out new things, you know, it can bring a higher education into your life because Guru in Lagna brings all the good things, okay? So therefore, focus on self-growth and your health and try to expand in every area of life. So when Guru enters the Ascendant, you might be trying, you might have already tried to take a note of every area of your life and you might have tried to improve, but you need to put more efforts, all right? Because Guru will only enter your Lagna after how many years? 12 years so this transit maybe you are in your 20s and you'll be in your 30s or maybe you're 29 and you'll be in your 40s when this transit comes right so therefore don't misutilize this transit all right very 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 important transit grow growth is the mantra for you all right take care eh? taurus all the best now we go to gemini Gemini, incredible time for spiritual growth. If you are not growing spiritually, then where are you growing, my dear sir? <laughs> this transit is in your 12th house, Guru in 12th. Brilliant transit. Not the best transit for uh, material prosperity, maybe, depending on your dashas. But yet another incredible transit, which will, which should actually inspire you to go towards a spiritual path. So therefore, uh, try to uh, explore philosophical ideas, try to go to a satsang program, a spiritual community in the weekends, especially very important. Number two is you need to introspect because this transit is in the 12th house. So since this transit has occurred, you might be feeling that, you know, what's going on in my life? You know, do I really need to do the things that I'm doing? It's like the thinking, what's going on, what's going on? Do you feel like that? If yes, then, well, you are not wrong. You are not overthinking. You are not underthinking. <laughs> so you need to understand that now is the time where you try to resolve your hidden fears or unresolved issues, you know. So it's a time for healing, basically. So try to, try to heal yourself through any, you know, Ayurvedic practice or, you know, Learn about astrology. Through astrology, learn more about your horoscope. You know, get to know yourself and try to see what is there inside your subconscious mind. Okay, very important. And number three, this is this is very important. You need rest. When Guru enters the twelfth house, you will feel the need for rest. So, in case you are feeling that, you know. I need to take some time off. Then it's okay. Don't 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 feel guilty about it. That don't don't punish yourself. You know, of course you don't have to rest six months, <laughs> but you can at least take some rest. If required, also take a pay cut and go for some vacation. You know, do that because see whichever house Jupiter transits, that house kinds of kind of expands and you get benefited through that house. So now if Jupiter is in your 12th, he's expanding the 12th house, which means you are, you are feeling the need for rest. So that means you will be rejuvenated. Okay. So therefore, don't, don't, don't avoid it and don't overwork. This may not work in your favor. All right. So Gemini, spiritual growth uh, is required. Introspection is required. Discover yourself and take rest and go into seclusion. Do yoga. Do meditation, do pranayam, do asanas, you know, do spiritual practices, you know, try to go to some ashram, try to go to the forest sometimes. You will really feel at home, all right? All the best, Gemini. Now, we go to Cancer. So, Cancer, what's going on? For Cancer, as you know, this transit is in the 11th. So, now is the time that you go and do networking with people, right? Well, not really. See, Networking is one of the most 
overrated and overused or over abused terms everybody is obsessed about networking oh just network with people you know contact him them you know sabse bana ke rakho kab kab kon lag jaye pata nahi but the problem is superficial networking does not help you know if, if suppose you go to some uh, wedding tomorrow you know your friends wedding and suppose one big ceo of one company comes and you know in the heat of the moment you grab the opportunity and you take the phone number of that person but if you don't have anything valuable to talk then uh, what's the use you will have a phone call and maybe you know then the person may tell you you need to start something so therefore you are focusing on networking but it's very important that you also ask yourself why why should somebody network with me what can i offer to that person is it just about like you know superficial interactions and contacts and all is it just because am i just networking because i have to or do i have some serious business okay even if it's not related to business but it should be a serious serious business okay so therefore try to see how you can engage in the community by seeing how you can contribute don't try to suck see when jupiter is in your 11th house you may get lot of contacts but they will not fructify properly if you don't do the hard work and if you don't have the if you don't have the proper homework so if you are meeting a millionaire or a big uh, spiritual personality or a big celebrity then do do the homework you know no no at least 15 20 years of their life don't don't just go and ask oh how did you start your life you know tell me about your childhood <laughs> this is not proper all right now you can take inspiration from them you can ask questions to them about their initial journey but you should be aware okay? and the person will know actually now number 2 please focus on your long term goals 11th house is the long term vision so please focus on your long term aspirations and dreams take the necessary steps that is required to go and you know hit your future goals very 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 important all right very important and of course friendship and support now cancer ascendants jupiter in the first or in 11th as in your case is maybe one of i mean these two are the best placements okay so that means taurus and cancer you are the most lucky for this transit and this transit will happen again in your life after 12 years so imagine you are 39 so next time when this transit happens you you are in your 50s <laughs> okay <clears throat> so therefore if you need help ask help if you need support ask for support be there for your friends okay and give them support and also take their support so the first point is community involvement which means you should contribute something and the third point is you should all also take help from them okay don't shy away but also be of some help and service and number two of course long term goals all right so think of the present past and the future primarily of the future and the present not so much of the past but take help from those people who have achieved great things in their past all right all the best cancer great time congratulations please utilize this properly now we go to leo lagna so for leo lagna what's going on this transit is in it's in your mid heaven the 10th house right <laughs> so career advancement like jhok dalo sab kuch agni mein jhok dalo put all put everything in the fire absolutely not <laughs> see if rahu transits in the 10th house i would have said if rahu or mars or sun transits or just work 18 hours 22 hours a day and you 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 will make it in life but you need to understand this is not rahu this is not the sun or mars okay it is jupiter so jupiter represents holistic development so you may think you know i need to go to google facebook microsoft amazon netflix and all this or you might want to become a millionaire or a multi millionaire or a real estate king no or a cinema cinema star but before doing all this before desiring all this you need to ask yourself 
why am I doing some work basically? No. Is it making me happy? Uh, yeah, maybe, you know, it's a mixture of happiness and money. You know, some unhappiness plus a lot of money. <laughs> so therefore, when Jupiter is transiting your 10th house, it is imperative that you try to figure out what is that which can actually make you happy in your profession in long term, right? So depending on that, you capitalize. So if you like to speak and you know you like to present, you can open a YouTube channel or Instagram or you know LinkedIn and try to put yourself out and do things that you actually like at a professional level. You might start charging people for your services. Nothing wrong with it. And number two, you might want to focus on your public image. See why I'm saying this. This is not to just, you know, uh, tell you to make, uh, to, to, to show a version of yourself, which is not correct. But nowadays, people judge you by your image also. All right. So be well informed. If you go to some event, you know, uh, many times I have seen people, they go to events and they have absolutely no clue. Somewhere somebody gave them some invite and they went. And if you talk to them, you will understand. They, they have no idea what, what, what is going on. So be knowledgeable. So because people will judge you by how you speak, how you talk. Now, this does not mean you wear, you know, some fancy dress and, you know, you just go and blow it off. No, it doesn't mean that. But be knowledgeable. Be of some help. All right. You know, be, be respectful of other people's time. Be respectful of other people's opinion. Hear others. Very important. Listen to what others are saying. By that, you will also gain respect. Okay, people will respect you if you respect them. Not everybody, but mostly in general. All right. And number three, now you need to develop your leadership skills. So maybe you need to take up some course for you know project management, system management, architecture development and all this. So now is the time you need to go a bit above your normal work that you are doing. So try to think, think, suppose you have a manager, try to think if the manager was not there, what, what, suppose your manager tells you that for one day you will become the manager. So what, how, how will you handle? Can you handle can you handle at least 10% of what your manager is handling? Maybe yes, maybe not. Or maybe you can handle more than 10% or maybe you can do better than your manager, right? So try to go into some leadership roles, okay? Or try to learn at least. Jupiter is the Karaka for learning. So try to learn, all right? So focus on your career advancement and enhance your public image, you know, by not by being fake. Fake it till you make it. No. <laughs> But be a man of value, all right? And try to become a leader. Very important. So Leo, please use this transit. Very important, all right? All the best. Now, we go to Virgo. So Virgo, what is going on? This transit is in your ninth house, right? Aspects, the Lagna and the fifth and the third. Very, very, very important transit. This transit is in your trines. So now is the time you should become like the great Maharishi Agastya. Agastya Rishi, he rang the oceans, right? So you should now drink the oceans of knowledge. Any ocean that you like. <laughs> but you should drink it. All right, so focus on knowledge, higher education, expansion. Read four hours a day. Just read, you know. What should you read? Not just anything. Read something spiritual in the morning and then in the day you can read about, you know, some uh, materialistic things which can help you become a better person you know, in your profession, in your communication skills, you know, in your family. Okay. And number two, you might want to travel and explore in different spiritual communities and, you know, satsang programs. Or you might want to meet your guru. So therefore, if you are getting some opportunity, then don't forget that this opportunity is not just coming by chance, okay? Because this transit will happen once in 12 years. So after 12 years again, it will come to your ninth house. So therefore, if you feel that you are having a genuine calling now inside to choose somebody as your mentor or your guru, 
then don't take it cheaply don't neglect it don't think oh it's just there you know maybe i don't need to act on it no act on it okay very important and also number three very important whatever is going in on on in your life material spiritual philosophical psychological mental intellectual whatever is going on try to see it from a spiritual perspective now long back i had made videos on this topic how to be a yogi in the city so maybe you can watch those videos you know they will give you a good perspective so for example if something good happens to you why is it happening what does law of karma say if something bad is happening what does law of karma say so try to see everything spiritually in the sense you know try to see what purpose could be behind <laughs> try to introspect okay so for you higher learning is very essential than travel and exploration of spiritual community spiritual knowledge and try to see the purpose behind everything if you do these three things properly you will make the best use of this transit all right all the best virgo now we go to libra lagna so for libra lagna what's going on this transit is in your eighth house right so now is the time you need to focus on doing research now eighth house can represent so many things it can represent you know the stock market uh, unearned money you know it can represent real estate it can show loans it can show bad health it can show your mental health it can show uh, your fears all right it can show uh, shared resources so therefore try to focus on things which are shared so within communities you know so maybe you have a relationship uh, you know you are married and then within your relationship there is something that you are not able to do together so maybe focus on that and try to see how you can develop you know a good bond with your you know because see the eighth house is the second from the seventh house of partnership so this is the time you strengthen an existing relationship this is not a time where you explore new relations relationships but this is a time where you try to add value to your existing connections and your existing circles okay very important so try to see how you can strengthen your bonds okay very important and the eighth house can give you a tendency this is point number 2 to go to extremes okay because eighth house is the house of death and after death there is life and when there is life there is death right so you might feel that you know you are just dragging along or you know you are just like there but still not there so if you are going to extremes then make sure you are trying to come somewhere in between okay so try to bring things to center so you need to do meditation and spiritual practices okay and number 3 is you have to work on your weaknesses very important because jupiter in the 8th is a fantastic time to know your weaknesses the 8th house shows weaknesses so therefore work on your weaknesses you know if you have uncontrolled sex desire you know try to work on it try to protect preserve your semen or if you are addicted to you know smoking then try to not do it try just no does not mean you superficially say you know oh no no i won't try it. i won't do it but you take steps in the right direction understand and uh, educate yourself about you know de addiction and all this okay or you are you have too much anxiety you are always negative you know you are always pessimistic you are angry all the time so try to try to see what is pulling you down and work on it okay very important best time to work on it all right so for libra focus on shared resources and develop trust and bonding with your existing connections and there could be inner transformation all right go go deep do research have balance and harmony don't go to extremes and also try to <clears throat> try to work on your weaknesses all right wish you all the best libra now we go to scorpio lagna so scorpio what's going on it's a best time for the for a new partnership all right 
this transit is in your seventh house. So now, just like for Libra, I said, you know, for Libra, it is more of like, you know, strengthening your existing relationships. But for you, it can also be strengthening your existing relationships, but also at the same time, look out for new partnerships and, you know, uh, try to see how you can collaborate in different areas across the spectrum. So, for example, if you have a YouTube channel and you are speaking about finance, you know, try to invite some astrologer or try to invite some health expert. So, try to do things interdisciplinary, okay, inter and intra, both. Okay, that will help you to get different perspectives on life. And then you need to understand that you have to learn the art of compromise. Because the seventh house is the house of adjustments and compromise. Okay, so you need to learn negotiation. So if you don't learn negotiation, you might go into one of the extremes. You may, you may not do any deal at all because you don't want to give away anything and you may still not get a deal or you 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 may want to take everything okay or sometimes you give away everything so then you you are on the wrong side you you are not benefiting so the best negotiation is when two parties walk equally dissatisfied <laughs> but they make the deal all right so that's like a good negotiation <clears throat> so therefore Learn negotiation, learn the art of adjustment, compromise, and you will do brilliant in the teams, okay? And number three, very important, you need to learn to give commitments to your existing relationships because what happens is Jupiter transiting in the seventh can give you a lot more people than you actually want. So then what happens, you might you might have a tendency to you know jump from one thing to the other okay because you are getting so many opportunities so therefore strengthen your existing partnerships get into new partnerships try to bring harmony try to bring balance in your relationships and try to compromise do adjust you know and stay true to your commitments so take one relationship do give commitment work on it and then move it move to some some other relationship okay and when i say relationship i'm talking of business relationships here <laughs> all right because don't do this with your personal relationships you will suffer it's you will get sin and you will suffer for it so don't jump like monkeys and dogs from one person to the other all right but even in your professional circle maintain your commitments stay true to your word all right all the best, Scorpio. Now, Sagittarius, what's going on? Sagittarius, Jupiter is your Lagnesh and he's transiting your, which house? The sixth house, right? <laughs> what is sixth house? Sixth house is the house of diseases. It's the house of disputes. It is also the house of weaknesses. Okay, so the shudder ipus are in the sixth house. Kama, Kro, the Loba, Moho, Madha, Matsar, Lust, Anger, Greed, Envy, Pride, Illusion. These six Anarthas are in the sixth house so therefore now is the time for you that you try to focus on your daily routine okay so health and routine should be your first priority no compromise with that so make sure you are eating well you are doing proper exercise and you are sleeping well all right don't compromise with that whenever your schedules are unbalanced whenever your schedules are off you will see anarthas will come so therefore, do your morning sadhana, have your morning program properly, do your mantras, you know, do arti and read the Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam. Do it in the morning and also in the evening to some extent if possible. Then you will see your mind is calm and eat, eat right, all right? Get your health checkup done if you feel required. Number two, focus on serving others. So now is the time you have to serve selflessly without thinking of returns. Now, it does not mean that you just randomly serve, you know, without any expectation. Now, that's ideal if you can do. It's like Nishkam Karm Yog. But that's very difficult. You may not be able to do it. So <clears throat> you need to understand that at least you should be able to serve in a way 
without too much expectation that is something which you should do at least you may not be having zero expectations because that is only possible for a great 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 personality not for normal people like you and me maybe <laughs> but try to limit it try to be of some help all right try to be of some use to somebody else okay and number three, very important. You should be obsessed with skill development. Six house, ten house. These are houses of skill. Ten house is more of leadership. But six house is skill. So try to become somebody of value, you know. Because many times I see people, when this transit occurs, you may get, you know, new job or, you know, new fancy things in your life. But if you... If you cannot be of value, then you will lose your job very soon. All right. So therefore now for you, even if you get a new job, don't go behind designations. You may get designation of like some big vice president or somebody like. But can you do the work? My dear sir, my dear madam, if you can, then great. If not, then uh, well, you need to do the work. Okay. So therefore, uh, please learn new things. Please focus on practical application of your knowledge. All right. Enough of your knowledge. Now it's time to apply. Okay. So focus on your health and routine. Be of service. Reduce your expectations. And learn to apply things practically. All the best Sagittarius. Now we have Capricorn. What's going on Capricorn? So for Capricorn, this transit is in your fifth house. Right. <clears throat> This means this is a time to express yourself creatively, right? Well, maybe not. <laughs> ah, Guru has entered fifth house. I'll become creative. You know, I will have children. I'll do this. I'll do that. I'll have new hobbies now. Oh, well, maybe, maybe not. You might have new hobbies. Nothing wrong with it. But the fifth house is not just hobbies. The fifth house is... The house that tells you why you get up in the morning. So why do you get up in the morning? My dear sir, my dear madam. Why? What is the reason? Every Capricorn Ascendant who is watching this. Write it down in the comments. This is the only Ascendant for whom I am telling this to. Not to all. Not to any other Ascendant. All the 11 Ascendants are, are exempt from this. <laughs> The rest 11 some other time. But for you Capricorn, write down in the comments. I am a Capricorn Ascendant. This is my motivation to get up in the morning. If you try to write in one line, you may, you, you may, you may feel very daunting because you might not have one, right? So try to find your motivation behind why you get up in the morning. Very important. All this creative self-expression, love, romance, everything is nonsense. Everything will fall in place. If you cannot find your motivation, life is not of much use. You will just exist and not live. Okay, So try to live and not just exist. Number two, take a note of your joy and pleasures. So for Capricorn, you may get a lot of opportunities, you know, to have love affairs, you know, to have creative self-expression and all this. But you need to ask yourself, am I really getting joy out of all this? Or am I, am I just doing it, you know, to maintain my image or my social circle? Or because as they say, you know, karna parta hai, you got to do it in society. So check your motivation behind your you know recreation your pleasure and creativity and all this all right the both the points are a bit similar but one is you know specifically with your life purpose and number two is more of your you know recreation and hobby and all this okay because you may find that you have taken up some hobby which you were interested five years back and now you're not interested in that anymore so then you need to take off some time you need to take, off, take some time off from your hobbies and, you know, check if you really want to do it the rest of your life for the rest of your life, okay? And number three, specifically, try to cultivate, gen, try to bring genuinity, authenticity in your existing relationships because the fifth house is the house of your heart. 
so now is the time that you develop your relationships where you have heart to heart connections they can be with your family members your friends or colleagues or with anybody doesn't matter okay <clears throat> but they should be genuine so therefore if you have good con connections you know good contacts you know try to make them more valuable try to invest more time you know try to know that person and try to know yourself okay so capricorn for you you really need to figure out what you are doing in life and i'm not talking of profession why do you get up in the morning what's the motivation behind your recreational activities you know why are you doing it are you doing it for yourself do you want to do it always or are you just doing it to maintain your image okay and are you going deep enough into your relationships you know so therefore this is a time for introspection and looking deep within inside okay all the best capricorn now we go to aquarius so aquarius what's going on fourth house transit very 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 important this is a transit in your kendra and jupiter gets exalted in the original fourth sign which is the sign of cancer right so now home and family is very important for you or maybe or maybe not right so this does not mean you just randomly you know go and start you know talking to your mother you know or your family members it doesn't work like that okay if i am brutally honest you may not like to hear this you might want to hear oh i should focus on my mother it's okay but it doesn't work like that okay so if you feel it's not working with your mother or with your family or with your home you know with your your inner circle fourth house is your inner circle your close circle if you are facing problems then you need to understand that there is something which is something you're not able to it's like you're not able to get the pulse of it okay so therefore if you are not able to have a good family life if there are quarrels in your home try to see why that is happening okay because you may externally suppose i tell you you know aquarius lagna go and focus on your family you will say oh yeah now you know we will go for this picnic we will go on this summer holiday this that blah 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 but that may not help you so try to understand the requirements of your family members why they are unhappy with you you know try to take their feedback okay very important and also number 2 try to connect to things at an emotional level try to see why you are doing something are you finding happiness because fifth house fourth house is the house of stability fifth house is more of the happiness but fourth house is stability and you know inner so try to see why are you doing something okay do you feel secure when you do something so for example maybe you have a friend with whom you hang out but do you get emotional stability do you get emotional uh, fulfillment by doing that if not then maybe you need to reconsider the relationship okay or you need to be honest okay so therefore try to cultivate a sense of belonging with your existing closed ones that is very important because just going to picnic or you know uh, spending money on them giving gifts will not help you beyond a certain extent okay so ask yourself what's going on okay and number 3 you need to reconnect with your heritage and roots and your existing culture and people in your homeland your motherland so this has to be done as they say charity begins at home so learn more about the people that are around you and also learn more about your society culture you know your kul devta your gram devta all this you know because and learn more about home learn more about vastu and all this okay jupiter in fourth can give you knowledge of vastu so try to see you know what is the space you know you might want to enter into real estate but most important is that you try to seek connection with your roots okay so therefore if you feel a bit out of place then try to have a genuine conversation with your closed ones and you know the home your family your mother and you know if you have any other connections try to see if you bond emotionally 
and try to connect to your heritage and roots. All right, Aquarius, wish you all the best. So now, last but not the least always, we have Pisces. And for you, Jupiter is your Lagna Lord. So very, very, very important. So Lagna Lord is transiting in your third house. So you need to focus on your communication skills, right? Or maybe not. <laughs> well, of course, you certainly need to do you certainly need to focus on your communication skills. But also you have to ask, you know, why am I communicating? What is my objective? So many times when Jupiter is in the third house or is in transit in the third, you may feel you are not getting results, you know. Why? Because you have forgotten your objective. So you need to remind yourself, why did I start doing this? So suppose... Pisces Ascendants, if you started a YouTube channel two years back, five years back, two years is too less, you know, say five years, seven years, eight years. And now you don't feel like uploading videos, you know, you're like, ah, I think I'm done. So if you feel demotivated, then ask yourself, what was your motivation behind starting this YouTube channel? Why did you want to start a channel in YouTube? Right? Very, very, very important. So improve your communication skills, but also ask yourself, why? What's your objective? Do you want name fame? You want to convey your thoughts? You want some validation or you want to help others? You want to share? What is it? Okay, try to ask that to yourself. And third house is also the house of, you know, skill and interview. So try to, you know, crack some interview if required. Or try to interview somebody, you know, try to have a podcast with somebody, you know, learning, education, uh, intellectual growth, um, pursue things at a practical level, okay, that will also help you. And from the third, the 11th and the 7th and the 9th are receiving aspects, right? So therefore, it is imperative that you focus on networking. Yes or no? Well, certainly not. <laughs> as i said for some other ascendant also maybe it's cancer because for cancer it's transiting in the 11th house so i said therefore cancer don't just go and do random networking it doesn't work first learn to be of some value build genuine connections not just you know oh yeah i've taken his or her card and you know oh yeah i'm done actually you know nothing else is required no whenever you are going to some network circle do proper research about that circle and some prominent personality so that you can talk not that when you meet them you ask oh what did you do from your childhood what inspired you to become this one you know which is fine there's nothing wrong in asking but you need to ask genuine questions okay when you were of this age, this incident happened in your life. What inspired you to bounce back from this traumatic event that you had? You know, maybe somebody, some family member died or they had a divorce or they had, you know, some amputation of some body organ you know, or something very drastic. But they bounced back, you know. So try to do proper research before going into networking, all right? So therefore, Pisces Ascendance, Focus on your communication skills. Ask yourself, why did you communicate something in the first place? What's your objective? What's your motivation? Develop practical learning, you know, go into interview, podcast and all this. And at the same time, focus on being valuable to others during your network in networking interactions and not just superficially network. All right. Thank you so much. Please take care. And if you're new, then don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the thumbs up and share it with somebody who you think needs to know about all this. Okay. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will surely find him. And don't forget to go to my website. If you want a personalized consultation, you will find the link down in the description section. Take care. Jai Siaram.